everyone! Today's video, ironically, is about hitting your deadlines like a pro. Despite the fact that I was supposed to do this video way earlier, it is super late as of recording and editing and posting this video. So let me tell you what to do so that you don't end up like me and you're scrambling at the last minute to get a thing done. So let's go! Let's get into it! Also, I have a, a little doggo named Matika with me because there's fireworks outside and she's really scared of fireworks, so we're hiding in the basement and doing recordings. Normally it's Fado who's with me. He's my little recording pal who sits in a beanbag halfway across the room and watches me while I record, but now I got two doggos and that's real good. Anyways, right, content, okay. So, let's say you have a thing you need to do. Let's say it's a webcomic. It's probably a webcomic or a a book, I don't know. But say you have this thing and you need to finish it. What really helps me is setting a deadline. I talked a little bit about this in my last video, talking about like staying motivated when you don't want to draw things. And having a deadline really, really helps motivate you because there's a day when you have to get it done so you can't just keep putting it off. So what do you do to make sure that you set these deadlines and hit them and get your stuff done on time? Well, number one, if you're doing a self-imposed deadline, as you probably are if you're working on like a webcomic or a comic, maybe you want to pitch it, maybe you just want to post it, whatever it is, it's probably a self-imposed deadline. So make sure that you are setting something reasonable that you can do. An example of a really unreasonable deadline would be finishing 30 pages in a week. You're not going to do it, <laughs> trust me, or you're going to do it and they're going to be really bad and you're going to have to redo them. So another really bad example of a deadline that probably won't work for you is if you say, I want to do 30 pages and I'm going to give myself three years to do it because you're going to forget about it. You're going to lose interest. It's not close enough for it to be fresh in your mind. You're, you're going to wait three years and either you're going to be like, oh man, I sure didn't do that thing. Whatever. It's been so long. I don't care anymore. Or you're going to wait to the very last minute and then do it all in a night. <laughs> Those are the two options. I'm sorry. So make sure you're setting a deadline that is not too tight and not too long. A reasonable deadline, let's say the 30 pages thing, a reasonable deadline for that would be I'm going to do 30 pages in, I don't know, six months. That might even be a little tight, but I think it's close enough that it'll keep you working on it. Um, and keep it fresh in your mind. And, you know, it's only half a year. It might seem long. It gives you enough time to, like, actually get the work done, but it's also close enough that you don't keep putting things off forever. And the second part of reasonable deadlines is breaking them up into chunks. In order to help keep that deadline stay fresh, even if it's, like, six months out, it's really important that you set smaller deadlines in the meantime that are easier to hit so that you aren't waiting to the very end and scrambling. Also, with a deadline that's pretty far out, it can feel a lot like you're struggling. Even if you are keeping up with things, you might not feel like you're keeping up with things. It might feel like, oh, I've been working on this forever and I'm not getting anywhere and, you know, the deadline's so far away, I'm never going to get there. And it can really make you doubt yourself and make you feel like you're either not working hard enough or you know, whatever other bad things your mind can conjure up. <laughs> so it's really important to set small deadlines so that, you know, maybe it's something that you hit every week or every month or every day, but something close enough that when you hit it, it feels really good. And it makes you want to keep going, going so that you can hit the next marker. You know, if it's every two weeks you have to get so many pages done or so many parts of pages, that's really reasonable. Especially if you chop up how much you need to do into the time you need to do it. So for 30 pages in six months, six months is about 180 days-ish, like, you know, give or take for the months that have one or two extra days or whatever, whatever. I don't know, February is weird, but it's about 180, let's say, 180 days, and you have 30 pages to do. So what I like to do is I take how many pages I need to do, and I divide them by the amount of time that I have, so usually days. 30 pages divided by 180 days. Um, is 0 0.16 repeating for a while, but that's a really weird number. So let's find something that's easier to work with. <laughs> Freaking heck. Uh, wait, what's 52 divided by 2? 26. 26 weeks. Sorry, so I did the math, and if you divide, like, 30 pages by 180 days, you get a really weird number. So what I'd recommend is then breaking it down into weeks, 
So there's like 26-ish weeks in six months, give or take. So if you divide your 30 pages by 26 weeks, you get 1.15 pages. So you basically have to finish about a page and a bit <laughs> every week. So I'd probably round that up so that you could get it faster. So maybe like a page and a half every week or a page and a quarter every week. And that way, you know exactly how much you have to do every week. And that's a really easy goal to hit, especially if it's just like a page every week-ish, give or take. So breaking your things down and understanding how much you need to do in order to get that goal in little bite-sized pieces really, really helps. I do this all the time when I have a big deadline, like say I have like 30 pages due by so-and-so date, I just chop it up into how many pieces I need. Um, sometimes it's full pages, like I need to finish a page every week. Another technique I tend to do is I break my pages down into parts, so meaning like thumbnails, pencils, inks, coloring, whatever it is, whatever, how many steps go into a page, I usually break it down like that, so that, you know, divides up how many bits I have to do um, to more than pages. So for something like that, I'd probably have to do like five parts, so five pieces of a page within a week. And that's still pretty reasonable because that still equals just like one thumbnail, one pencil, one ink, one color, one lettering, whatever it is. So that makes it a lot more palatable than just taking a swing at things and hoping for the best. It really does make it easier to hit little milestones and it helps keep you on track. The next thing I'd recommend you do to make sure that you're hitting these little milestones that you have is to make a chart. Um, I got this from doing NaNoWriMo every year for a long time, which is a writing challenge where you write a novel in 30 days. And so when you're working on it on their website, you type in how many words you wrote every day and they make a little chart of your progress and they show you how much progress you've made versus where you should be at to in order to hit the end goal. So do this for yourself. Make a little chart of where you need to be every week. Um, so if it's that 1.5 pages every week, you know, chart it as it goes up. So the first one would be like 1.5 pages. Day two would be like three pages, um, et cetera, until you get to the 30 pages. Then every day, type in how many you did. Um, I've done charts like these by hand. Sometimes I'll use an Excel spreadsheet. But yeah, you can really track if you're where you need to be. And you can always readjust things so that if you fall behind for a couple weeks, you just rejig everything so that you just see where you need to be and um, where you need to get to, kind of recalculate your totals and your time. An app I'd recommend for this is called My Write Club. It's again um, a charting web app thing for writing, but they also um, include other formats like scripts and words and minutes and stuff like that. So I just use pages, which um, are intended for script, but they work for comic pages as well. And you can just track your progress and it's all right in there. You put in your goal, you put in your due date, and there you go. It charts all that stuff out for you. But I find the charting system really, really helps just because it, it, it it's just a visual representation of where you need to be and where you're at. And that really, really helps me keep on track. I'll put a link for my right club down below because it has helped me quite a bit. The next thing I'd recommend um, in order to make sure that you're hitting your deadlines is to also do timed work sessions. Again, I mentioned that in my motivation video. Just because timed work sessions helped me so much with my productivity. So instead of every day expecting yourself to hit so much progress, because some days you can't finish like a half page or a page. Some days it's like you're sick or you got really busy, like you went to the zoo today, <laughs> Ursula, instead of doing your work. So you're probably not going to hit that full finished page today. But if you just work for half an hour and that's your only expectation for yourself that day, you're definitely going to get it done and you're still going to get some progress done on your comic. Um, it really helps with motivation and it really helps with keeping you checking in on your comic. So if you work for, say, every day, 20 minutes to 30 minutes on it, that's a lot of progress that's going to slowly build up over time. And you don't have to sit down and agonize all the time working on your comic and hoping you finish a page today. Heck yeah, work to time sessions are the best. Do it, please. Uh, so finally, I would really recommend when you are starting out your project and you've set your deadline and you're really excited about it, get as much done at the beginning as you can. This is like the most excited you're going to be about this project until you're at like the last quarter of the project, which can be a long way away. So make sure that you are 
getting a lot done while you're still amped and excited. Don't sit around waiting for like everything to come together magically. Just get as much done up front as you can because eventually things are going to get stressful. Your interest is going to peter out. Whatever it is, stuff is going to get in your way because stuff always gets in the way of the creative process. But get as much done as you can up front. It'll save you later because you'll be ahead of your deadline and you'll be really excited. And things always slow down right in the middle. Again, this is something I learned from NaNoWriMo. Things slow down in the middle and then they pick it back up at the end. So help yourself a little for that middle slog and get lots done right at the beginning. If you don't hit your deadline, don't call yourself a failure. It happens. There have been so many deadlines that I have not hit. And sometimes it's because they were unreasonable, but sometimes they were totally reasonable and I just missed it. Sometimes I was working my butt off and I still didn't get it because I got sick or other stuff came up or it was just a bigger thing than I initially thought it was. So you have to be a little bit agile with what you're doing. You have to be able to adapt if you discover that your project is too big um, or that, you know, stuff came up and you couldn't get all your comic pages done. That's totally fine. You need to be able to adjust your deadline. Um, if you don't hit it initially, it's totally okay to move it back and set it for a later date even then. If you're like, well, I got three quarters of the way there and I still have this last quarter to do, just measure out how long you think it'll take and set your deadline there and see how it goes. These deadlines, because they're self-imposed, they can be pretty soft. Now, don't, like, let yourself get away with missing them and resetting them all the time, because then that's not actually a deadline, but it's okay to give yourself a little bit of grace time, because like I said, things come up, or it's a bigger project than you anticipated. I don't know. Be, be nice to yourself. It happens. If you're ever working with, like, an editor or a publisher or, like, any creative thing where you're working with other people, Usually if you don't hit a deadline, they'll understand, especially if you were working hard on it and just stuff happened. Like, I've, I've never had a reasonable good boss ever yell at me because I said my estimate was wrong and I need more time because they want a good product at the end. And so should you to yourself. You want a nice product and you don't want to go crazy in the process of making it. So it's okay to move deadlines. You're not a failure if you don't hit it, especially like your first time with setting deadlines because you, you might still be figuring out your working style. You might have set maybe something that was too much and that's okay. And you just, you got to adapt and you got to be nice to yourself. That's very important. But yeah, like I said, you can always readjust things, but don't go so far that you never ever finish your stuff. It's also really helpful having that chart because you can see you can visually see your progress. If you had, like, points where things were really slow, you can see where they slowed down. You can see where things really worked. And you can kind of inform your process from there because you have lots of lovely data to look at. I think that's all I got. Thank you so much for listening. I really wish you luck with setting your deadlines. It does take a little practicing and figuring out how much you can do at, up front, but you can do it. I believe in you. You can get your comics done and... I don't know. Make sure you subscribe, leave a comment, let me know what you're working on, and if you're hit, gonna hit your deadlines. And thanks again. I'm gonna go finish up making this video now that I'm done recording it. And now go my puppy because she's scared of fireworks. Um, okay, I don't know how to end this. Um, goodbye. <laughs>